hello and welcome back to another episode of Second Take Movies. It's been a while, about a month or so, I'd say. But uh, today, my guest is Derek Stewart. That's Derek, right. how are we? I am good. Yeah. I am, I'm ready. I'm it's enjoying my Friday. Very hot Friday afternoon. Yeah, it's a good day to be inside. Yeah. And so today we're talking about the Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt that came out over Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, Derek <laughs> has some controversial opinions about a certain trilogy that I love that we won't get into. <laughs> but when I was first talking about this podcast to him, he was talking about that, and I was like, "Well, that's going to be an episode." So that will be an episode one day. But I think we decided to just sit down with one movie, and that movie right. is. The new Chris Pratt Tomorrow War movie. The Tomorrow War. And this is in my wheelhouse, too, because I was thinking about this. Well, so somebody I work with told me, uh, like, I teach a class on science fiction. Yeah, so, and so I really, like, accredited certified guest here. Yeah. You know, I need yeah. some sort of... You teach a sci-fi class. Right. I need some acknowledgement in front of my name. Yeah. You know, some letters or something. Yeah. Because, yeah, I feel like... I'm bringing a lot of weight here. Right. And I don't want that to be noticed. <laughs> right. He, he loves movies. He's an English teacher. So, let me pull up a synopsis real quick before we jump into it. I would like to meet the guy that wrote a synopsis of tomorrow, the Tomorrow War. Well, I'm going to IMDb, so I don't... <laughs> I mean, because that's a... That's, the staff. There's a lot that goes on in the movie. It's yeah. Hard to but, well, it's hard to boil down synopsize? any movie to three sentences. Yeah. But they tried at IMDb, and this is a family man is drafted to fight in a future war okay. where the fate of humanity relies on his ability to confront the past. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's fair. And it's got a 45 on Metascore and a 6.6 oh, out of 10 on IMDb. I feel like that is also fair. Yeah. Let me. Forty-five. I'm gonna try mm. a new thing and and do a positive review and a negative review. All right. Blockbuster movies are often as loud and action based as the Tomorrow War, but they're rarely as diverse in tone or so delightfully wild when it comes to in-your-face entertainment. Hmm. And let's go to a really low one. This one is thirty-two. Ooh. Unfortunately, the Tomorrow War isn't allowed to be the dumb, just go with it summer spectacle it should have been a la Independence Day. Instead, McKay and Dean force it to be a self-aware and smart, quotations, time travel drama with feelings big enough to crack generational war trauma issues among lots of things that go boom and pew, pew, pew. I don't know if I agree with the second one. Okay. As, like, it's, it's, they wanted it to be a dumb summer movie? I'm, like? I'm, I'm kind of in that camp, I would say. So like, you think it tried to be too smart? It, it, it You tried to throw PTSD, climate change, family yeah. drama, yeah. all into a, a basic movie about the the uh, people in the past okay. getting drafted to go fight monsters in the future. Yeah, now I can I could yeah, you're you're yeah. right. It I, it did try to do too much. Yes. I'm in that camp. Yes. But I don't like the critics saying, "Oh no, it's trying to be too smart." The movies are allowed to be smart. No. I, the, the, like, this make sounds, a smart movie. This sounds like a douchey magazine anyway. It's it, Paste magazine. Oh yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I could prejudge them. Right. Sure. Uh um, but like yeah, I don't think it if I think I'm with you. I don't think it failed because it was too smart for its own good. I think it failed because it did try to do way too much. Right. So it's fine to do something big and smart. Like it would it's fine to try and tackle any of those issues you talk about. Mm -hmm. PTSD. Right. Um, or climate change or um they also I think tried to tackle the uh, what are the names of the monsters? The white spikes, white spikes, as a symbol of the coronavirus. Which that's a a note that I wrote. Um, I don't even have to look it up because I just they borrowed every. I mean, it's a great the the design of the alien is great, right? right? I think it's it's well very well done, especially like real close, like that first close up shot where it reveals itself in the dark. That is one of the best shots of the movie. But they in the stairwell looking up and the borrowed. Yeah. Everything from every other sci-fi franchise, especially Alien. There's a lot of Alien references in this movie. Yeah, and Aliens, especially yeah. with the Queen. Yeah, and you know, I was thinking about that uh, comparing this movie to Aliens, like the second Alien. Yeah, Aliens. Yeah, um, 
like that movie succeeds in the way that this one failed to be kind of serious and lighthearted at the same time. Yeah. Like there's all sorts of quotes from that movie that are kind of that you look back and you quote them like game over, man. Yeah. And like where it's a fun summer blockbuster. But in mm-hmm. the moment of watching the movie, it's tense yeah. and it's scary and it's exciting. I think even Chris Pratt at the end yells die at one of them. It, it, yeah. I think, yeah. When he kicks it off the cliff at the end. Yeah. Yeah. But, jk simmons which is a positive in this movie jk simmons is a positive in like, any movie did you just tell it to die yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um it, yeah and it flipped back and forth from that right. sort of yeah. super serious to slapstick yeah. a couple of times that was just really weird yeah. like yeah but I, basically I when we when we open up the movie chris pratt is in the middle of a job interview Right, some I couldn't. As a research lab, I get it sounded like it. It wasn't because yeah. he plays. He's playing a a biology high school biology teacher. Right, ex soldier. Yeah, high school but he was he's a veteran teacher. who's now a biology high school teacher. Right, and he's he's in the middle of a job interview and he doesn't get the interview. He doesn't right. get the job, and then he he it's Christmas time. No, is it Christmas? Time? Yeah, it's at Christmas. There's Christmas trees everywhere. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, the, I mean, and they're watching soccer, like some sort of Europeans. Okay, yeah. Okay, like, is it the World Cup? Because that's the only way any Americans watching. Yeah, soccer. that's. What, I didn't get that. Why are they watching soccer? I guess. They and wanted... I even last night I Googled, which yeah. I'll cut them some slack. I'm like, I Googled like when's the next World Cup? Okay, and they were like the next match is like the first match really for it isn't until November 2022, and this movie's set in 2022. Okay, so so maybe maybe the World Cup matches, but okay. this th- there's like 30 people in this house, right? Not that many people are coming over to watch <laughs> soccer. You ever been to a Christmas party with a soccer game playing? No, <laughs> and I was like, every World Cup I've ever watched took place in the well, is in the summer. I have okay, so this ties into one of my thesis yeah. thesis about the movie One, yeah is that there's too much in this movie that you just kind of have to look at and say okay i guess yeah. like you just gotta like people are gathered together over christmas time watching soccer and you're like i, I get why not i would have made it my my theory is i don't know if it, it should have been the super bowl or a playoff game for I the mean, nfl that would have been fine but it was probably a licensing issue Oh, because the NFL locks down a lot of their stuff. Maybe that's it. It's just easier. It was like it's easier to to get the trademark for the copyright for the international teams. Yeah, and FIFA. Okay, I'll cut them some slack. That's not a big deal. I mean, it didn't wreck or ruin the movie. It's just kind of an eyebrow raise. My first question, I guess, I'll pose to you. I think Chris Pratt is severely miscast. You told me that before, and I would ask you. Who are some alternatives you would have cast? So, well, I disagree with okay. the, cri- with the well, miscasting. Well, let's first. let's talk about that first. So, like, I believed him. Yeah. And you told me that before I watched the movie, so maybe that kind of swayed me the wrong way. I don't know. But you told me you watched it and thought he was miscast, and then I watched it, mm-hmm. and I found myself thinking he did a fine job with the acting. Like, when he loses his job, like, he acted believably as this uh, upset kind of depressed father now yeah um who still has to put on a good face for his family like he, that was okay and he's okay in the action roles yeah um i i still think because even watching the second i did not hate this movie the second time i watched it like okay. the, the first time i watched it i was like this is the dumbest thing i've ever seen right i watched it again last night it's i mean it's not bad it's not bad i mean I w- honestly I wasn't p- paying that much attention yeah. the first time I watched it because I was like let me throw on this dumb yeah, right. this dumb movie on a Friday night and... it's watchable yeah it is watchable I'll give him that what made you say this about Chris Pratt like wh- what was the moment in the movie where you're like I don't think he's the right guy I I don't think he I don't want to pigeonhole him but I don't believe him as a science teacher yeah like he, he's he, he's kind of an action guy. He's yeah. he's kind of making a career out of being an action guy now. So the veteran, yeah. yeah, I believe that. Yeah, he pulls. He he came across believable as like a new dad or a dad yes. with a young child. Yeah, to me. Yeah, like I thought, like 
he was kind of goofy yeah. with his daughter and mm-hmm. but still like a good parent and like when, when he has the conversation with her about him being drafted mm-hmm. like i thought that worked well maybe him as a science teacher was weird yeah i would have probably gone with john david washington i might have to look up these people and i don't know actors maybe that's just because i just saw him in tenet and other stuff oh. and he's been really great so I'm like, I want him to be in everything now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a strange kind of role, though. Maybe a... But, you know, I mean, it, Chris Pratt is also an executive producer on this movie, so... I noticed that. So he's going to be... He's definitely going to be the main character. So that's probably the... That's the, probably the only reason this script made it anywhere, is because somebody convinced Chris Pratt to say, hey, you want to do this movie? Okay, yeah. well, let's go pitch it. And any studio executive is going to take a meeting with Chris Pratt. Yeah, that makes sense. Because he's, I mean, I mean, he's good. I like him, too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's a great guy. Guardians I, of I the Galaxy yeah. and Parks and Rec. Like, ever yeah. since then, I'm like, I like Chris Pratt. He's And Chris he's Pratt, eight, like, Parks and Rec Chris Pratt would have played Charlie, the sidekick, <laughs> eight years ago. <laughs> he would have. <laughs> that is, that's Chris Pratt eight yeah. years ago. That's Kinda where goofy. he came from. Kind of the, the comic relief. Yeah. 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 So maybe he was the only guy to play this movie. I don't know. I it, it needed. I I don't the the role needed somebody really charismatic to make it work. And yeah, I, and, I was but I don't to... think that was his fault. I think that was the role. I think yeah. that was the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, because if you like the guy who I think should have been leading the group that goes into the future, um, was the guy that had done like three tours in the future, yeah. like the black guy that had yeah. done like three tours. In I the was future. trying to find his name. I could not find but his name. He's a terrible actor. Yeah, his, his name, character his, was interesting. His name in the movie is Dorian. 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 Yeah. It sounded like he was reading his lines the whole time, though. Yeah. Well, he's sullen and yeah, quiet and. But anyway, he's got a big old shotgun. <laughs> During. The the World Cup final, I guess it is. Who knows? Right. A portal opens up. Right. Which is the maybe the second best shot in the movie. Right. The portal is cool. Yeah. The the the, the effect. Well, see, this movie, you got to follow the production history. It was made by Paramount and and Skydance, I think. Okay. And during the pandemic, they sold it to Amazon. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's one of those movies. Right. Did much get changed? Like you're talking about special effects. Did Amazon go back? Yeah, that's and what like I'm saying. Like for special this, effects, for this stuff? to be a solely streaming movie, it's like okay, there's some production value. Oh, thing. I see what you're but saying. But I guess more and more, I would say more and more streaming movies are getting that. Treatment. Yeah. No, uh, like, you well, know, like with these billion dollar companies. Yeah, right? Disney Plus is releasing some. I mean, cinema quality shows. Oh yeah. Straight to streaming. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and like. Uh, the Amazon series with uh, John Krasinski, uh, the uh, the Tom Clancy, uh, yeah, the Tom, yeah, um, like that had some really good special effects, yeah, um, and really high production yeah. values. But so, yeah, so the future comes to the present in twenty twenty two, fully armed, fully armed, bunch of soldiers coming yeah. out a portal. Yeah, maybe think you're think asking about for your help presentation. Yeah, yeah, and they say, hey. There's a there's a war in the future, right? And we need help. And we need help. And they flat out say like we're your sons and daughters, daughters and right. granddaughters. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then all the world's governments just agree to draft. Right. Okay. Well, that part's covered via montage, right? Yeah. Like so, it says we need your help, and then it kind of shows I'll, Chris Pratt on the couch going, "What in the world?" And I, I want to know, what, yeah, what was that timeline of? That's well, they got to do it by montage because otherwise people you show can explain up. It. Oh, I mean, you can do a title card that says like six, eight months later. Yeah, that's what they did. They did like twelve years oh, later, I and then it's the newscasters <laughs> and the newscasters saying, "Let's sum up what's happened since twelve years, oh, twelve so, months ago." So technically, at this point, it's it was twelve years later. Twelve months. Twelve months. Did I say okay. years. Twelve. Yeah, a so year later. Twenty twenty three. Right. And like you said, all the armies have gone. Yeah. And have been decimated. Right. Like literally 
Okay, so decimated. we said our militaries first. Yeah. Okay, that's where I got confused. Well, it's covered in like a brief little like I thirty paying seconds. Attention yeah. To that. <laughs> and it's and it doesn't it doesn't make much sense. Like it's, this is yeah, it still doesn't make sense. Yeah, this We're is just, the weird part we just, of the movie. We just believe these people that came through a portal, right? And like thirty of them. How was that not a trick? Yeah. That's what, like, I'm like, did, have you not watched what's going on during the pandemic? Like, where are all the people saying, the portal ain't real? Right. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, like, that was just Hollywood special effects. Like, mm-hmm. uh, to get the idea that the entire world would unite and send their whole military off. And then Over. when their military doesn't come back. Right. Keep sending people. Yeah. Like, we're just killing people left and right. And they're coming Tons back of them. with like huge amounts of ptsd because yeah. chris pratt's wife is a yeah she's a trauma trauma counselor counselor therapist. veteran counselor yeah. let's call her that yeah and so yeah we see her with all the people missing their limbs right and suffering ptsd and... right and since chris pratt is our protagonist he eventually gets drafted right of course and he um he goes to the draft center and there's a moment where they they tell him to take off his shirt, and I was watching an interview with, <laughs> interview with him. Such a dumb moment. And he was like, and he's like, well, I was reading the script, and and you know, I said, oh, okay, here it is. So he's like, so I'm gonna improv something on the day. So that improv made it into a movie. He's like, why well, I gotta take off my shirt? <laughs> and but I'm like, Chris, you're the executive producer. <laughs> you could have said I'm not taking my shirt yeah. off. Like, no, right. nobody's going to argue with you. I mean, he worked hard for those muscles. He's yeah. good to show yeah. them off, I mean, at least in one shot, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that those, you know, that, that workout you did a long time ago got you Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy and all this right. other stuff. So. I mean, he's still pretty buff, it looks like. Yeah. It, and it, the, the camera is like this low angle, like looking yeah. up at him in the light. It's like, it's like come you on. made that decision, Chris. <laughs> That's a really, Calm down. really flattering shot. Calm down. <laughs> it's like taking my shirt off. I'm taking my shirt Pretend- off. He's, he's the executive producer pretending that was something that surprised him. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you saw it in the script. Like, you were already made EP before you ever read, read the script. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't want to hear it. Oh, he's, man. He's probably behind the scenes like, hey, I noticed we, we don't have any scenes where I'm shirtless yeah. in the script yet. Can we work one of them? In? Right. <laughs> and so, and they're bolting these things on the people's arms, which is... Yeah. I hesitate to use this word, but slavery. <laughs> yeah. No, because, yeah, they can't take it off. It tracks them everywhere. Yeah. Well, and they're not, because I doubt they're getting paid if they're getting drafted. No. I mean, if they die, they their family gets a million dollars. Woohoo, I that, guess. That's, I, like, in what world did, were the writers of this movie living in where they thought, this is believable? Yeah, everybody's just going to go, like... The people, world will just go along with this. Yeah. Like, people are going to go be drafted, first of all. Yeah. For a war that they can't see. Right. And they're going to let you bolt something onto their arm that tracks them. Yeah. And Have you met people nowadays? Yeah. Like, who... Like, that's that's just not feasible. Like, that... I mean, in 2022, that, that a majority or even a significant portion of Americans would be like, Yeah. This sounds okay to me. Yeah. This sounds right. <laughs> That's one of the parts where, like I'm saying, you just got to watch it and be like, yeah, okay, I guess. Right. You just got to, like, roll with it because... Yeah, I mean, yeah it's suspension of disbelief. We got to move the plot along. So. Yeah, yeah. So, he gets drafted, goes and, you know, tells his wife that he got drafted. She's like, right. oh my gosh, we've got to run. Right. They go fine. Well, his, his dad could take it off, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. And enter J.K. Simmons, who plays Vietnam veteran. That's a believable character here. He, angry with the government. Angry with the government. Lives in an airplane hangar, and is yeah. making a living popping these. Right, he's got like a cooler full of them. Yeah, full of the armbands. <laughs> I guess he's putting some because it it tracks their pulse is what it really tracks. Yeah, they said that a couple of times. Like that's their unique so how's identifier. He, how's, how's he creating a pulse? Like I feel a lot of people's pulses would be the same. That's a good question. Does it, I don't know. It doesn't really explain it. He no, just knows how to just, get them off. It's just to set up his character as the crazy kooky guy. Yeah. And has all this stuff when they need to go to Russia at the end of the movie with a plane. Right. <laughs> that, well, <laughs> that's the we, only reason he's in the movie. Yeah. We, that's so bizarre. But I mean, anytime. Well, he, and he's the, he's he, the guy that abandoned. Yeah. And then there's that Dan story of he Forrester abandoned Dan. So that, uh, so that he can. And I, okay. So that's the, that's the family part of the movie. Big part of the movie. Mm-hmm. 
Dan loves his daughter and his wife. Yeah. And will do anything to protect them because and is never gonna leave them because his dad left him when he was young. They set yeah. that up in the beginning. When this in this conversation he has with his dad. Yeah. And then when he gets to the future, oh no, it turns out he did. Why? Like Yeah. Like what I, I mean, there's kind of like some motivation there, like when he doesn't get the job in the lab and he comes back inside and he's dissatisfied with his life kind of thing. Yeah. But that's like, that's bizarre to me. Like, yeah. That's the weird. Again, like you got to watch and say, I didn't think he would, but oh, okay. Yeah. I guess like he just has <laughs> like there's you get to all these points in the movie where you're like, oh, I guess I guess he did. I guess people would be OK with things bolted onto their arms. Yeah. I guess, you know, we would all believe that these people were from the future. Yeah. So then then Chris Pratt spends the next 10, 20 minutes saying goodbye to his daughter. Right. Saying goodbye to his wife. There's another montage of everyone saying, I guess, everybody showing up to this draft center. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And we meet Charlie. We meet Charlie. the, the, The sidekick. Who's great in this movie? I like Charlie. Like he's quick. Um, I love that actor's <laughs> name. I, I love that actor. I just can't remember his name right now. I don't think I've seen him in. He's been in a much. lot of like comedy stuff. He's he's really good. But uh, and so he's kind of nervous. So Chris Pratt is like his trying to protect him. Yeah. And like he identifies him as a vet, right? Like he says, "You were yeah. in the army, right?" He's like, and he's like, "Yeah, I was." How do you know how to do a long story? You, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you were in the military. That's why you know how to right. load this gun. <laughs> and like, there's a contrast there because there's Chris Pratt who's trying to help Charlie, and then there's Dorian yeah. who's also very selfish. A vet, I think. I, I think he's a veteran of this war. He's a veteran of, but obviously knows what's going on. Yeah. Like he's even been to the future before, right? But he's not trying to help people or yeah. allay their fears. He's just mm-hmm. like taking care of himself. And then then we get to how they they jump they mm-hmm. jump people to the future by shooting them up this tunnel through a wormhole through a wormhole oh and the reason everybody getting drafted is basically all over 40 everyone's over right. 40 that's because apparently the future has identified all these dead people and it got it records somehow ca- cause a paradox when right they show up in the future i like that I mean, you're going to make a time travel movie. You've got to deal with the paradox factor. Yeah. My thing is, and and they say that there, there's only two jump points, basically 30 years apart. Right. Like two rafts floating down a river. Yeah. Say. My thing is, if you can travel back 30 years. Right. Why not share advancements in science and technology? So, because yeah. all the, because later on. I guess we'll go ahead and spoil this. Chris Pratt meets his daughter in yeah. the future, and she's a colonel now and right. a scientist. I mean, you saw that coming. Yeah. As soon I, as he's going I, to the future and there's this close relationship as, as, with his daughter in the past. As soon as I saw Yvonne Strahovski was in this movie. Yeah. And then I saw where the story was going. I was like, okay, that's his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, I, the I like she... that they don't like try and save that for some shock twist. Right. Like I they mean, reveal it pretty quickly. Yeah. Like, I mean, she even does a pretty good reaction when she hears his fe- uh, voice over the radio. Yeah. She's yeah. like, all yeah. right, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah. Because, but anyway, why not it's all that lab equipment send the schematics back? Yeah. Send so the, that we can be prepared. That should have been the mission the whole time. Send some of the aliens back. If we're working on the serum to kill them. Yeah. Why you got to do that in the future? Start. Let's let's send some of that back. Get, maybe don't send all our scientists to the future to fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was. So the, the big note. Okay. okay. Yeah. You've got notes. So too, I, so. One of the things that I wrote down, like from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I got to pull it up here. <clears throat> Is why in the world don't they have any advanced technology in the future? They've got a wormhole. Yeah, they they they're able to be, and to quote the movie out of gu- bubble gum and 
Yeah, that's what they say. They made it out of bubble gum and paper clips or whatever. Yeah. But still, okay, it's oh, still, 30 years from you, the future. You, you're that advanced that you can build a rudimentary time to have travel device. Right. If you and and you can do genetic research in the midst of, you know, you, you a should war. be able to find a way to to jump back some equipment that we can I'm, I'm not even talking about like yeah, not like even like time travel. I'm just mean like they get to the future and yeah. nobody's made a gun that can shoot these things. Right. You, you like you should have learned that like the first time you shot at them is like, "Oh, regular right. bullets don't work. Well, let's catch one." We got we got lots of different kinds of bullets now. It took them that long. It took them from cuz they say the things got out in what, 2048? I can't remember exactly, but that sounds right. They escaped the ice in like 2048. Right. And I got problems with that too, but keep going. Yeah, no one in that time because it takes them till because it's it, like twenty fifty one and twenty one twenty fifty one or fifty two in the movie, right? And it takes them that long to to even try to catch the queen to try to figure out how this serum works, right? Hey, while we've got the queen, maybe also catch another one of these dudes, the regular dudes, to yeah. see like test ammunition on them, right? <laughs> like and. The cool thing, well, and and this is maybe being a little unfair to the movie, yeah. but if you've got a portal back to the past, yeah, and you're fighting a war and the past is not, they have all of this infrastructure to yeah. make equipment for you, right? To like send stuff that will help, right? Um, like toxins and bullets and yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe give your soldiers like some body armor and right. vehicles that aren't plastic little jeeps that yeah. get turned over and like i don't i don't get that at all yeah. like the, there's no advanced technology to fight these things in the future yeah and <sighs> like it just doesn't feel real at all you go into the future and they're fighting these things with humvees and helicopters yeah. and machine guns that are what we have now. Speaking of which, the first time we're introduced to the white spikes, as they call them, because right. they shoot spikes. They shoot spikes. Those are which, cool. That was a pretty unique design. I'll, I'll the monsters. The monsters are cool. Yeah, they're up there. It's the top thing of the movie. Yeah. The they get nerfed as the movie goes along. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because when we're first introduced, they're blowing open doors, like right. just plowing through them. Right. They're knocking Humvees flat yeah. off the ground yeah just pick them up and flip them over and when they catch the queen they just wrestle her down with ropes freaking chris pratt freaking punches her into the cage yeah i'm like i i know this guy's the hero but i mean yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like so the the monsters here are like zombies and zombie movies yeah badly done zombie movies they're like, strong when they need to be and weak when they need exactly to be. Yeah. they're whatever the plot calls for yeah whatever it needs at that moment um which okay because they because uh, right. at the end of the movie when they're in siberia like there's a, a, a shot where like he jumps off of a snowmobile and it clocks the queen right in the head yeah and she's supposed to be the the end all be all and she just gets knocked out that's right well he's chris pratt you know he's chris pratt. He, he gets a he gets a fire axe and kills one after being there for you know yeah. 15 minutes and he just yeah it's that part's the they're very inconsistent monsters yeah um that and that again you just watch and you're like yeah okay, yeah. okay. but you gotta accept it chris pratt eventually meets his daughter he finds out in the middle of conversation she's his daughter yeah and she's a scientist. She's a colonel. She's scientist and colonel. Scientist and colonel. Yeah. She's just like her dad. Graduated from MIT. Yeah. Um and she tells this story about how when back in her timeline when Chris Pratt went off to war, right? It to this tomorrow war, the very war he's at now. Right. He came back all messed up as a lot of people would be. Right. Um ends up leaving the family and it dies in a car wreck and so she's still kind of mad at him even though he hasn't right. done all that yet so i guess there is what i was saying earlier there is some explanation of why yeah. he might have left my thing is if you're that high up where you get to make decisions about stuff right maybe say hey don't draft my dad because it's a bad part of my life doesn't she say later that she did it on purpose because she wants him to take the toxin yeah, back he, ne he needs to be here like she's gonna keep he, him he's, alive he's, she's a, he there's a, he, he's a <laughs> there's a purpose for him i'm like oh she's got a plan yeah right 
there's a perp- there's a reason why you're here. Right. I'm going to traumatize my 12-year-old self again. I'm going to tell you off. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you off for something you haven't done yet. <laughs> Which, that's just kind of strange. And then traumatize my 12-year-old self all over again. Yeah. And relive this whole timeline. How, how, that's that's a little bit... Um, that's dumb. Yeah. Like, how are you going to be mad at him for something he hasn't yeah. done yet? But she's an amazing... Yvonne Strahovski is yeah. one of the few Australians that has a good american accent i didn't even notice so yeah yeah it's good yeah she was on you ever watched chuck on nbc i yeah came on 2000 she played she played the the blonde (laughs) cia agent oh yeah that was her yeah so she used an american accent for like eight years so yeah yeah because she sounded american in the movie which is weird because she wouldn't have to like no the whole world was at war she could have spoken but well but she was married yeah never mind the daughter was american yeah so they should have written that in somehow. <laughs> the, daughter's also, the daughter's Australian for some why, reason. Why do you have an accent, Mary? It's a long story. Uh, yeah, a long story. <laughs> you know, the world gets smaller. There's not a lot of people. So, and another thing I didn't write down, but I just remember out of the blue, they eventually get this serum made. Right. And they're te- they're about to test it on the queen. Right. And somehow the queen is intelligent enough to see them hand off this vial of stuff. Oh, I didn't catch this. Yeah, there, it cuts to her vision. I remember point, that. And she sees them handing off the vial. So she knows, apparently she knows something's up. Like oh. They found a way to kill her. And then somehow she's able to wriggle around. She wakes up. Yeah, because they got her heavily sedated. Right. That's what it is. And so she finally wakes up. And then she does her little scream and all of the... Right. The other white spikes just somehow they've been crawl over tracking her or following. Yeah. yeah, apparently they're attracted to her scream or yell yeah. or whatever. They kind of hint. They kind of hint it like uh, they walk in the room with the with her all chained up, and the uh, Muri says, uh, "Yeah, she stinks really bad." Yeah. So like they kind of hint like she's, she's releasing she's some sort of some signal. kind of pheromones. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she screams, and they all come charging in. <laughs> Uh, and just and, overwhelm everybody. Yeah, and they they're because they're on this big huge barge out in the middle of the ocean with two walls and a bunch of water landmines. Yeah, out and drones. Now those those are cool. Like there are yeah. all these flying drones with machine guns shooting the white spikes down as they're climbing up. Right. That was that battle. Mm-hmm. That was that was pretty cool. But again, yeah. like yeah, there's a really good slow motion shot shot of all of them. Like when when. Uh, um Miri's about to die. Yeah. And there's that that was that was a good that would have made Zack Snyder cry. Yeah, that was a nice <laughs> shot. And that is Yeah, that is a really good part of yeah. the movie because she falls and he dives after her. Yeah, and then jumps and then back. gets sucked back to um two prison. two notes I have. One I don't know why I wrote this. I just have science. In all capitals and three exclamation points. It's all about science. That's I know a- what it was. There's a montage of them like trying different things and <laughs> not working. It's like, oh no. It's like, science. So <laughs> I've got a theory. You see if this makes sense to you. Yeah. It's about the science and it's about the coronavirus. Okay. I think they went well, they back. made this well before COVID. So. I think they went back and added it in. You reckon? Because it doesn't fit. Right? Okay. So. They've got. She wants to be. A, she wants to develop vaccines as a kid. She's talking about Jonas Salk, right? And, yeah. Uh, and then in the future, she's capturing the queen to get the the serum, and they make the serum, and it goes back with him, mm-hmm. and does nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. I think they worked it all in just to like pay lip service to the scientists creating the vaccines for COVID. They're our heroes, and like these people represent them because he gets this and he goes back and he's clutching it, right? He gets back yeah. in the present, and he's clutching it, and they're like, We tried to get it out of your hand and we couldn't. And he's like, Okay, I've got it. And he doesn't, he doesn't like, What would you do if that was you? You yeah. go on national TV, listen, the future's dead, but I've got the answer to prevent it right, right here. Like, yeah. we're all safe. Let's make a bunch of this and then go find him and kill him. <laughs> um, but no, like, he goes to his high school and gets the nerdy kid in class to tell him about volcanoes. Okay, yeah, okay, so. <laughs> they've let's let's progress the story here uh, well, uh, before we get one off more thing before okay. i let, to finish so they do make it yeah and they go find the ship with all the frozen white spikes also 
the, the other note I had that right. I just like said this audibly out loud right. in my living room. I was like, is that a cruise ship? Because <laughs> during all this destruction, there's this huge ship just sailing in. There was a cruise ship sailing in and right I'm there. And I'm like, why are there cruise ships during this war? <laughs> Unless it got turned into a makeshift. I guess you get what you, you can offshore you feel what you can. battle station. Or, I don't. I was like, that's a cr- cruise ship. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> And it crashes. That's another good shot, though. Yeah, Explosions, it was. Explosions, yeah. beautiful like, effects. Great effects in this movie. Cruise ship but. crashing. So they eventually, they're trying to make it to this helicopter, and she, the the whole place just explodes, and she right. slides off this landing, and for some reason, Chris Pratt jumps, and th- there's nothing but this huge mosh pit right. of white spikes. But he's going to save, he's going to go down with her. Oh, you least. think he was trying, because he knew his jump was about to happen, so you I, think he was trying to I, grab that's her. That's what I thought at first. Oh, like that, see, that would have been, that would have been good. Or something. He's just, or maybe it was just an emotional, no, I can't let her die, and he's just going after her. Like, that's probably what it was. It may, I don't know if he had the plan to actually I'm giving jump him too much credit it. to giving the writers this movie too much credit but he seemed like like if you were a dad and that was your daughter like that's what oh, you yeah. do she falls off you're jumping after yeah you're her. Just, yeah whether you both die or not yeah so like that was i, I kind of liked it okay but yeah and then he gets back though yeah yeah he, he gets back slams on the floor and then during all this trauma like you said he's got the the thing clutched the in his hand and he looks over and there's our old friend charlie who's who made it back too yeah who yeah. made it back too who's seen some stuff also, what happened to all those other people? Because, you know, we had that huge fight in the street, and then he just meets up with his daughter and just like, fuck the rest of y'all, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're gone. Uh, Dorian made it back, too. Yeah. It doesn't say how. No. Well, everybody else dies when they get teleported in. Yeah, I mean, there was like, I guess those three or four yeah. or five people, because there was two people in the group that stayed behind when they got caught, and one got shot, and yeah. one got... And so they were holding off the spikes while the the, right. the, the military was coming in with the jets. Right. I mean, but before place. that, there's like, what, like 20, 30 four, people. 400 people on the hangar floor that jump through the wormhole yeah. and get released in midair and all die. Yeah. But as, as soon as he meets his daughter, he's just like, fuck the rest of you guys, I guess. I mean, I'm going to. <laughs> I just wanted at least like a little bit of a shot on whoever was controlling the wormhole with like yeah. their head in their hands going, what have I done? I just killed hundreds of people. Yeah. Cause like when none were, of that, cause th- there was like that, that moment of like, oh shit, we messed up. Yeah. Like it's when the they're coordinates all jumping, are wrong. Oh, and then, what? <laughs> yeah. There's no. And it just drops them in there like on the top, on like a rooftop pool somewhere. Yeah. And only the people that land in the pool live, and everybody else is plummeting down to yeah. the street horribly, yeah. screaming. By- that was traumatic, but, and there was no no like resolution or like, oh, geez, that yeah. was terrible. It was just like, oh, well, we're the ones that are alive. We must be the ones that matter. So Let's keep going. From Chris Pratt's group, the only people that look, seems like makes it back is Dorian, Charlie, and Chris Pratt's character. I just keep calling him Chris Pratt because I couldn't. Dan Forrester. Dan Forrester. That's his yeah. name. There's nobody um, else, is there? Mm-mm. Not, I mean, the rest of them don't show up at the end. Which fits, because they yeah. say like 20% of the people make yeah. it back and that's it. And so when he turns and looks at Charlie, Charlie's like, in a pretty pretty good moment yeah. of acting, it was like he looks like he's seen a lot of stuff. He's like, I, I hid. Right. I don't, I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> and then he has his moment of redemption later from he that. Does. So that's, he I does. mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah. What well, they, yeah, because the last 30 minutes of this movie, those are the weird ones, is just silly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because you think that's the end, right? You're like, oh, he made it back with the serum. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, go but, make a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, so they somehow figure out he has a conversation with his wife. And she's the one that figures out that, oh, they've been like, this was like from a ship that was. Right. From long ago. Which, obviously, you didn't see the ship land. They just appeared. Well, I Gee. think I think their thing was it landed millennia ago. Like yeah. Like a thousand something years ago. Right. I feel like somebody could have figured that out as well. How did it get covered by ice? Maybe, did it land that deep in the maybe earth? Maybe it landed and crashed into the ice? Yeah, that's a good question. And get frozen over? Or it landed and crashed Yeah. in the very beginning of the ice age and then yeah. the ice 
grew up on top of it. Kind of off topic, but that's all what I always wondered about the first Captain America movie is like when they find him right. 80 years later. It's like y'all knew where he went down. Y'all couldn't <laughs> y'all couldn't find that big old ship. Y'all let it freeze over. <laughs> I think they thought he was dead, uh, yeah, to be fair. Sure. Yeah. They found the Tesseract, though, but they had to because they had <laughs> Avengers coming up. But anyway, <laughs> so we go to tell the government, hey, they've been here the whole time because this high schooler told us about how these, these, these yeah. volcanoes melt. <laughs> and they... Okay, so that's kind of dumb. It is like, dumb. Like, like the, Charlie's a scientist and figures out the volcanic ash. Yeah. That's under, but y'all can't on Google that. Yeah, I feel like that's a fact you could Google. Yeah, they got to go to the high school if you tell them. Okay, that's kind of cute. Who runs a projection of how the ice is going to melt? Right. So here comes the the climate change aspect of the movie right. that they tried to throw in. Right. What's the What's the ice melt projections? I saw that coming from a mile away too. And yeah, like, they've been here all the time. I'm like, oh yeah, they were in the ice and thawed out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they go to the government. Or the DOD guy. Yeah. And he's like, no, the world's in chaos. We can't go save it. Like, that's his answer. Yeah. Like, you want me to spend Pax Tear Month? Pax Tear Month? Pax? <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Tax payer money. To go to, on a wild goose chase yeah, to it's like, Russia. It's like four people, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's like y'all spent a bunch of money setting up these draft centers and launching people to the future. Yeah. And that, again, I go back to why can't you just share the technology you have in the future with the past? Because apparently you were able to build a jump facility here. Right. <laughs> but they, they, There's got to be other advances you could send no, us. No, they got nothing. For they us don't to have get anything ready. that we don't got. That's, right. That's, that's except time travel. Even their cruise ships look the same. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. That might have been Jeff Bezos' huge yacht, actually. <laughs> Probably added that in. Last now, if it minute. was if it was really set in the future, like Bezos or Bezos's grandson, and, yeah, <laughs> uh, who's the other guy that just they'd all be camped out in a space station, yeah. looking down, saying, "Oh man, look at that! The I world's think, going to pot." I think Richard Branson beat everybody yeah, in space Branson. recently. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he and he and and Bezos Junior would be up in the in the station saying, yeah. "I'm glad we're up here, not down there." Right. <laughs> so. Our our three heroes decide to go rogue in quotation marks, right? And they go. We go back to Chris Pratt's dad, right? Who, and and they say, what, what did they set it up so obviously? They're like, we need a, we need a. How are we going to get to Russia? We need a guy who can escape government con- detection and has a plane, right? And then they're like looking at each other, obvious, <laughs> like, oh yeah, my dad. That's also, him to a T. Also, getting back to J.K. Simmons and when they when Chris Pratt first meets him, mm-hmm. I have a quote. Mm-hmm. And I think, what was it? Chris Pratt says, wants him to do something, or says, I wish you'd do something. Or, right. Anyway, J- his response to that is, I wish Stevie Nicks would show up in a birthday suit with a jar of pickles and a bottle of baby oil. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> And and Dan says what what, <laughs> and he says don't read too much into it or something. That like was that. my reaction. I was like, I had to rewind it. It was like, first of all, what are you gonna do with those pickles? <laughs> don't. That's a question that does not need to be asked. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. That's a... all right. Yeah, and I even have the government will spend tons of money to draft millions of people, but won't let four people go to Russia. Right. <laughs> right. I, that the question Probably. I wrote down is why in, why is the government incompetent? Yeah. And like that's a part of this movie I don't understand. My first thought is when they in, when they enter this ship is this is a rip off of Prometheus. Yeah. My first thought. Yeah. Is they go to the high school kid and says, "How does this guy get claw on a, a volcanic ash on his claws?" Right. And he says, "They must have dug up through the ice." That ship is on top of the ice. They walk up and like Oh yeah, here it is. And yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. They I didn't mean, dig up from nowhere, right? Uh, like unless the the ice is thawed that much. Yeah, not, which I guess was there. Maybe I think that's kind of what they were going for. But like, well, he said they dug up yeah. when they got out. They didn't dig through nothing in this movie, right? Uh, they, they, yeah, that was that was <laughs> that was poor writing. But uh, we get Chekhov's bone saw. Chekhov's bone saw. Yeah, the, that that big huge 
Oh, saw yeah, they yeah, use, yeah, yeah. You know, like the, Chekhov's gun. Yeah, that Charlie has. Yeah, yeah that they, they, they use to cut into the ship. And he uses just, that to just slice one in half. And that, I'm like, there you go. There you go. Because I was disappointed with, I don't know if you've seen this, Army of the Dead on Netflix. No, I haven't seen that one yet. Basically, it's these mercenaries. It's during the zombie apocalypse. Well, not the zombie apocalypse. It's mostly contained in Vegas. Yeah. Oh, and they go and to, they go to the casino. Yeah. yeah. There's a guy that has one of those saws in that movie. And never kills a zombie? Never thing. uses it to kill a zombie. But they keep like showing it. That's a tease. And it's like, don't touch That's... my saw. Here's my. He digs it up out of the freaking desert to save it. To take it on the mission <clears throat> into. Well, Charlie's got one on him then, because yeah. Charlie has the saw and yeah. actually uses it. That, that, so I was glad when I saw this movie. It was like they show me a saw, they use a saw on a monster. Right. And that's show. his moment of redemption too. Like he, yes. he, he's like, I'm not going to hide this time. And he even he forgot to away. load the guns yeah. too in that moment. <laughs> yeah, because he was unloaded. playing with an empty gun on the plane. But he picks up the saw and saves J.K. Yeah. Simmons. Saves, you know. So, so at the end, you know, they've got the sir, and they, they've mass produced it from the future lady. Future lady's with them on this mission. Yeah, too. the future people come, and so they they start sticking it into these things, and it does nothing. Well, it kills the first one. Yeah, but then they start waking up. Oh, the serum the, is like this. I would red find herring the, of the plot. I would find the queen first and and kill her. Maybe because that's probably what woke him up. I was really like the 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 movie is about. At least I thought up until this yeah. point. I'm like, the movie is about him getting the serum, yeah. coming back, saving the world. Yeah. He gets the serum, comes back, decides, no, nah, I'll probably do it alone by myself with my dad and a couple of friends instead of actually saving the world. Right. And then gets to the ship with the serum to save the world. They stick four monsters and then all of them wake up. Mm-hmm. The serum is worthless. The serum does nothing in the movie. Yeah. Like, why? Like, his daughter died for nothing. Yeah, that was maybe that's too harsh. I feel bad <laughs> saying that, but like that's why I think they added it in later. They're like, like you could have told that movie without the serum. Yeah, he goes there, meets his daughter. She's mad at him. They kind of reconcile. She dies. He makes it back, and then decides to go kill the monsters. Because in the end, they just end up blowing it. Yeah, up. they just use explosives. Yeah, their one weakness. <laughs> I would have just blow up tons of monsters. I would have just planted charges. All, I'm sure your dad has explosives because that's probably where you got the explosives. Right, they got all sorts. You can of make more. Just yeah. plant them all around that thing. Yeah. Just right on the little pods they're in, because they're not up at that point. And you notice like the giant flaw in the plan, right? Mm-hmm. Here's half a dozen people going to save the world. Yeah. If they don't, if they wake them up early, yeah, they've killed everybody. And they nearly do that. Yeah. That's weird. Like, And the the queen is actually smart because he sticks her in her, her arm. I think she mm. must have like some sort of sentience or something. I feel like, yeah, she's smart and the rest are kind of dumb. Because they, they could have played with that more, but they, they yeah. cut to her perspective a lot. Yeah. You and know? she makes it out of the ship as it's blowing up he, and he, he's he fighting sh- her. He shoots her in the arm with it. Yeah. He gives her a shot in the arm and before it makes it the rest of her body, she just chops her arm. She just bites right. her arm off. Which that was yeah, and then they just eventually that was scary. It, so it ends up with again Chris Pratt punches this thing in the gut. Like to be fair, he's got a, a white he's got spike. A sp- yeah, <laughs> so he's just like boom, body blow, body and blow. And you know, body blow. she did just wake up from a however many thousand at years this point, now. a thousand year now. I yeah, know. I mean, so she's probably not yeah. wide awake yet. Yeah. I mean, if you woke up and then your house blew up and you were out, you probably wouldn't fight your best right. either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they blind her. <laughs> Trying to be compassionate to the white spike queen here. And then he just punches that serum right in her mouth. Right. And then kicks her off a cliff. Yeah. And yells, die. I mean, that's some action movie 101 right there. That That is the remnants of the dumb, fun movie this could have been. Yeah. But I think there's a, a Tom Cruise movie that did this movie better. What Tom Cruise movie? Edge of Tomorrow. Oh. That is a, it's a fun movie. That is a good movie. While still having some sort of like real good theme throughout. That's the movie this movie was trying to be. Exactly. But it's like basically Tom Cruise in like a yeah huge sci-fi Groundhog Day. Yeah. And it's awesome. And the monsters are scary in that one yeah. too. Yeah. And the, 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 it's a good creature design in that movie. That's a, one of the more original designs yeah. I've seen. Um, the, yeah. The guns work in that movie, though. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, so, 
here's the situation you find yourself in as Chris, yep. as Dan Forrester, right? Yep. You've been drafted by this organization that has decimated the armies of the world. Uh -huh. You're given a gun that doesn't work right. on them. You're given zero training to on how to fight them and no intelligence of what they even look like. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go through a wormhole and just do it. Yeah. Like, there's no conceivable world where all those people that are in that hangar mm -hmm. show up and they say, here's a gun that doesn't work. We're not going to tell you what they look like. And uh, you don't need to do any training. They're like, you don't, this is not basic training. There's no push-ups. Basically, you just needed people to just throw yeah. at these things. Because that's what it tells me. It says, oh, okay, so my job here is meat shield. Yep. Right? I'm yeah, here to, pretty much. I'm here to die so that yeah. the important people don't. It's like, no, thank you. We didn't want to show them because it was... They're already there. They can't go anywhere. Yeah. You, yeah. You've already set that precedent. At least that let me... That is the dumbest line in that movie. We didn't want to show you what you're going to fight because we thought it'd scare right. you. And also that uh, there's a chef. like The guy in the chef hat. What like, is that? People are just wearing regular clothes. Like They can't wear... Apparently can't wear shorts, but they can wear their jackets. And, and why does it matter? I, they don't explain that. I would have. I would accept the Terminator rules that only certain things can go through the. That would have yeah, device. something. Only certain kinds of clothing clothing can go make it through. But anyway, and and they get there. They're like, you don't need to do any. I like. They say you're not going to do push ups and and obstacle courses in this. Like, yeah. okay, so we're probably not going to be doing any physical fighting, right? Wrong. <laughs> like you get there and what are you doing you're running through the streets running through the streets shooting and at least climbing some, can i get some target practice right you got nothing at least teach us how to shoot the gun yeah because i'm probably the 60 percent of these people have never used a gun in well, their life to be fair those guns are awesome they, they are no recoil yeah and they never run out of ammo. And that is one of the best muzzle flashes I've ever seen. That's, in yeah, that's some it's seriously the, CGI'd muzzle flash. But it's it's the most realistic looking muzzle flash I've seen. Yeah. Those people that are like the one of the girls, uh, one of the women. Yeah. And the scene where they they look up in the stairwell and they see him. She's running down. No, it's not her. It's Charlie. Yeah. He's running down the the stairs going shit 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 shit. <laughs> Which is a great, yeah. <laughs> um, we were watching it with subtitles on because it was late at night and yeah. I didn't want to wake my kids up. <laughs> it's just all the way across the bottom of the screen. <laughs> uh, but so he goes down like three flights Don't of stairs. Don't go that way. <laughs> three flights of stairs with the gun, the butt of the gun tucked under his arm. Yeah. Not even like shouldered. Um, full auto the whole time. And it's just trucking along. Like, yeah. like that muzzle is steady, and that gun is spewing bullets, and he never reloads. I'm like, that is some seriously awesome yeah. <laughs> technology, yeah. whatever they no got there. One, that is my biggest pet peeve <laughs> no one reloads. movies in general, is especially action movies. You don't see anybody reload. Never. The only t the, And this is the reason I like The Matrix. The only, you see it in The Matrix. And John Wick. And John Wick. Keanu Reeves knows how to reload. And Keanu that's Reeves knows how to reload a gun and when to reload a gun. Yeah, nobody else does. I don't care. Keanu Reeves is one of my favorite actors on the planet. Right. I don't. You can say what you want about his acting ability. Yep. No, I watched. You'd bring this up. I watched John Wick three. Yeah. The day after I watched this movie. Yeah. I'm like, look at these reloads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is great. He's just popping stuff out and yeah. slamming it back look in. Look at these and... guns that. And John Wick three. I don't want to spoil that movie Go ahead. too much for your listeners, but right, yeah. there's a point where he's fighting people in body armor, Yeah, and his gun does not work against them. And what does he do? He lifts up his... He goes in, and he gets a gun that does. He goes yeah. back to his... He's like, I need a gun that pierces armor. And the guy's like, well, we got this shotgun yeah. here with armor-piercing rounds. And I'm like, man, that would have been great in the Tomorrow War just <laughs> to have one of those. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. But they don't. Uh, they don't have any guns. There. That was but, that was really bothering. But me. because this thing came out and a million something people watched it, whether they liked it or not, it's getting a sequel. Maybe the sequel will be better. I hope they they learn from. Because, well, so here's the thing. So there's one really good thing about the movie. I yeah. think. and that is that they had a million dollar movie idea mm -hmm. with that plot of yeah. people from the future come back and say yeah we're fighting this war and we need your help right that's cool that's yeah. never been done before that i know of right and and it's true 
like like these are your grand like every war is actually that reality every war is a war to save your children and grandchildren yeah right Pretty or much. every just war yeah if there's such well, a thing let, let's say um, the the first two world wars yeah because those were actual threats to us right that's that's a war to save your children and grandchildren and this is cool because it makes that into something like real and different like that yeah. was a neat idea yeah um, you actually get to go and fight with your right grandchildren and and, children. and and yeah but they don't have that in the second movie if they do a sequel right what are you what are you that's that's what i was gonna ask that was my next question is you know what, sequel theories i got two ideas okay go for so it. number one he's gonna build a wormhole and go back and save muri prime oh yeah he's that, gonna him and him and the science crew is gonna figure out how to that's what i thought when he comes back and the movie doesn't end I'm let's like, bring, he's going after her. let's bring on the old volcano teenager with yeah him. he can build a time <laughs> he could probably get, he's probably the get one get in that the future. kid a laptop he's probably <laughs> i tell you what's gonna happen he's probably gonna be the one in the future that built the time travel devices that could be it it's probably that you need, prob- we got this on record you could have <laughs> predicted it right you there can, paramount amazon whoever wants the idea you're never gonna see this or listen but i want credit for that part right <laughs> high school kid is the one that the, made the, the time travel the, the volcano nerd is going to make the time travel machine i that's that's good or yeah it's going to be like independence day 2 like the aliens are back you know oh. cuz and they just land and they got to fight them again independence day 2 i didn't see it but I figure it could There's just be a, standard alien it's invasion. Pre- it's pretty much the same as the first, just with more destruction. Honestly, that would have been just fine. But well, at the end Chris of that Platt, movie, shoot, to spoil Chris the end Platt. of that movie, yeah, the the crazy long haired scientist from the first movie, yeah, he's he's in this movie as well. He's been in a coma since then. Oh, okay. But he wakes up in this movie, and this what can only be described as a, a an apple white ball of an alien comes and says we're gonna give humans resources and we're gonna go get them sons of bitches so at the end of that movie they set up a sequel to where we go fight those aliens on their planet at the request of a different alien yeah the, this is a, a alien that we that they've found to, uh, we're getting into a tangent here but this is an alien that yeah their civilization has been destroyed by, these, by guys. these these conquering aliens, so they come to us to go. Kick Why their I don't know. If I was them, I'd turn around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got Will Smith. Yeah, we, well, not in the second movie. Oh, he went well. to Suicide Squad. Which oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, I was like, wait on Will Smith. Somebody needs to make like a composite alien fighting movie, uh, like 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 the Expendable Expendables. Yeah. Like, yeah. So there's Tom Cruise, there's Will yeah. Smith, there's Chris Pratt. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum, maybe. I'd, yeah, he's I'd, in that movie. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, with just all of them fighting aliens, I'd go watch yeah, that. Just that sounded like a much better movie. Us yeah. going to fight the aliens, but anyway. But then we're the conquering invaders. Yeah. So that's humans are never the conquering invaders. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's a can of worms. Yeah, I will open that one. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much this movie in a nutshell. Did we hit all your notes? I think so. We skipped over a few, but we covered them. I'm like I didn't. How? What would you rate this movie? Would you watch it again? I would watch. Uh, would you recommend it? I would recommend it to somebody okay. who wanted to kill an evening watching an action movie. Scale of one to ten. Scale of one to ten, six and a half, seven. I think I'm seven. Right out of five. Like, it was passable. Yeah. It was fun to watch in the moment. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm probably not going to watch it again because the parts that frustrated me the first time are only going to frustrate me more. Probably. Now that I know they're not resolved. Now that you know what's happening. Okay. Well, that is it for this episode. Thank you, Derek. Thanks for for having me on. Derek's probably going to be back for... You want to throw in a teaser a about big episode about why I think the Lord of the Rings movies oh, are no good. You just made a lot of people angry. I mean, Justin Howard even said, "Do you not want people to be friends with you?" <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it like that. I'll stand on on that. Yeah, on that so statement. you can cut it out of this and one if you don't. We'll want probably to cover that'll. I learned my lesson with the first three episodes. We'll do that. We'll do those that trilogy in one episode. I think we can, can cover it in one episode. Yeah, it might be a long one. All right. Well, thank you for being here this time. And a little tease for the next episode probably is Alien versus Predator. 
Aliens versus Predator. Maybe. But I will see you next time, and Derek will see you in another time. So, again, right. thank you for listening. What do you think of the movie? Let us know on Instagram, Twitter, secondtakemoviespod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.